about that. Dak is a bus bus rider, not a bus driver. Oh, Johnny boy. Jo- oh, come on, Johnny. Jo- Johnny. Johnny. Seriously? One thing you cannot talk about as a Washington football fan, oh, excuse me, a Washington Commanders fan is quarterbacks. You ain't got the room to talk about nobody's quarterback. Nobody's. You got, oh my God, you got sad Carson Wentz. Okay. Did, did you see him get clowned today by J.J. Watt when they came out with the J.J. Watt action figure and he had the sad Carson Wentz face? The, the sad. <laughs> Uh, Johnny boy, let me give you a taste of of your guy. L- l- just 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 a taste there, Johnny Johnny boy. Boom. There you go. There you go. So, no, come on. Uh, come, come on, Johnny boy. Johnny boy. Johnny boy. Seriously. You got that guy. That's your guy. Okay? You, you, know, you can talk about your team and the defense and the quarterback. Shh. There's a curse against Washington quarterback. Do I need to go through the list? Do you remember? Do you remember getting Donovan McNabb? Because they said, oh, man, we're going to get a veteran quarterback in here. Man, we're we going to get ourselves a veteran quarterback. You paid him $45 million for one year before it was cool to pay quarterbacks $40 million. Oh, my God, John Mooney. You know, if that helps you sleep at night, buddy, you know, that, that Wentz has a ring. Did, did, did he have a statue there at the stadium? Did, did he have a statue? Oh, okay, okay. All right, okay, just check it. He's got... He, he got a ring in his third team, third team in three years. But you went from Donovan McNabb, Mr. Chicken McNugget, right? Oh, my goodness. It's Joe Boo, Sports Report fan. Oh, long time no see. How are you doing? What's up? Oh, my goodness. Welcome back. And Tracy. What's up, Tracy? After Don McNabb, you said, you know what? We're done with the veteran quarterbacks. We're done with them. We're going to go get ourselves one of the top quarterbacks. We're going to give up three number ones and a two to get RG3. RG3! Oh, man. I remember they said when they drafted RG3, they were set for the next 10 years. I believe that was 2012. So wouldn't that be like right now that they wouldn't need another quarterback? That they would have been good for the next 10 years. Isn't that what they said? I thought that's what they said. But after that messed up they did have Kirk Cousins they didn't keep him they paid him 45 million dollars for two years and he said I'm out of here I'm out of this this cesspool okay because they got Alex Smith they said oh we'll go back to a veteran you know Alex Smith he was a former number one pick he's done great things in Kansas City that's the guy that's gonna take us and wow he played like ass and then got his leg spiral fracture the curse of the Washington Commanders strikes again. And for two off seasons, he rehabilitated. In the meantime, and in between time, they drafted Dwayne Haskins in the first round. We said, we're done with veterans. We're going to go back to the young guys. And that, unfortunately, rest his soul, did not work out too good for him. Hmm. After that, they said, you know what? We're going to go back for a veteran again. We're going to go get Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's been on a whole lot of bad teams his whole career. He never gets hurt, and he didn't get out of the first game. So now, Johnny boy, Johnny boy, when you look at the highway that is littered with quarterbacks' careers literally just falling by the wayside, Carson Wentz, who has had all kinds of injuries, more fumbles than anybody since 2016, who is now on his third team in three years, you somehow believe that this is the guy that's going to turn it around for you, right? Am I correct on that? Am I correct? I knew it would happen, Mark. 
I knew it would mother humping happen. You know, I'm pissed off, man. I'm frustrated because it pisses me off. Because that little bitch boy Carson Wentz, fat as hell last year, couldn't run, eating donuts between snaps. This guy comes in in phenomenal shape. Phenomenal shape. You know what I mean? Like, why couldn't you come in last year phenomenal shape? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Because Doug Peterson wanted him to stay in the pocket, so he told him to get bigger. But Carson, he didn't get bigger the right way. He got fat. So now, you know, everybody's like, oh, Phil, you're crazy. He ain't fat. He's always been like that. He just stinks now. I said, no, he's fat. <laughs> he's he's going to go to Indianapolis, and you watch. He's going to come in perfect shape. Perfect shape. What happens, Mark? What happens? Carson Wentz comes in, he looks 30 pounds lighter. My God, he looks thin. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Now he's going to go out and light it up, and I'm going to have to oh, watch that Oh, boy. Okay, Johnny boy, you know what? I'm not going to bust your bubble, okay? I, I feel good about having a car. You know what? For a team that has gone through so many quarterbacks, you know, uh, having Heineke as a starting quarterback, you, I, I, you should feel good about having Carson Wentz. You should feel good about having Carson Wentz. Yeah, go ahead. Feel good about I'm ha Believe me, I'm happy that you got Carson Wentz, okay? I'm happy that you did. We have the meats, William Tyler, okay. <laughs> You're fat. <laughs> Oh, man. But anyway, uh, you know, again, it, it's, it's exciting now because you realize that on the 20th, the Raiders open up their training camp. On the 20th, they open. That, that's only four and a half days away. And when you look here at the clock, we got 54 days, 22 hours, 44 minutes, and 16 seconds until kickoff. It, guys, it's coming hard and fast, okay? It's coming hard and fast right now. The season is upon us. Now, of course, the Cowboys, it doesn't look like, you know, I, I know Brian Green, but the mailman, you know, we were hoping that Catboy was going to deliver, but it doesn't look like he's going to deliver on Anthony Barr. You know, we've Cowboys have now signed two journeyman linebackers. More than anything else, I say... Um, I want to know why Jason Campbell trashed Washington, John. John, he trashed Washington because they had the good old Chuck and Duck offense. You know what Chuck and Duck offense was? That's when they hired the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier. Steve Spurrier came in here. You know, football is nothing but pitching and catching. Pitching and catching. He spent a half his time out on the golf course because he thought this is going to be like college. You know, I got the cream of the crop players and everything else. We're just better than everybody else. And it, Steve Spurrier was so crazy. They had a preseason game against the 49ers in Osaka, Japan. Osaka. And in that game, they won like 48 to 3. And ran it up. You know, he's like, oh, it's nothing but, you know, football ain't nothing. And all season long, as they were getting their ass kicked, all he says is, well, if we can just get back to playing like we did no soccer, we'll be okay. Dude, it was preseason. People aren't playing hard on preseason. Come on, man. Preseason? That's nothing but. We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. About practice. I mean. But. Yeah, that, that, that's why. Because the Chuck and Duck offense, literally Jason Campbell was getting killed. The offensive line, it was as soon as he got the ball, he was so worried about who was going to be the guy that was going to clean his clock because they were coming from everywhere. So as they called it, the Chuck and Duck offense, that you throw it and you better duck and hit the ground because somebody's coming for your meats. That, that's exactly how it was. Tay Cowboys, how you doing tonight? That must have been during the NFL Euro Europe days. Um, Eric Williams, I'm hoping for the best. You know what? Here's what you do, John, John Mooney. Hope for the best, but expect the worst, and you will never be disappointed. This is why the Eagles have set themselves up for resentment. So here's the thing. I'm I'm not going out here saying, oh, the Cowboys, we're definitely going to win the, the division. We're going to the playoffs. We're going to be, you know, super. No, 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 no. Because once you put those expectations out there, if you don't meet them, then you're a failure. You got 
Philly 500 last week. Now, I know he was suffering with COVID, but still. And, I mean, maybe the COVID now, it attacks the brain cells or something. He literally said the minimum will be that they win the division and the ceiling should be the NFC Championship. That's what Philly 500 just said this week. I believe it was Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe it was Wednesday. You didn't put it out there that we are going to, well, you ain't heard that from me. You ain't heard that from me. Uh, John, John, you do realize that this is a Dallas Cowboys channel, right? There are, you know, my, my man Rio, uh, 